Hey everyone, and welcome to a quick on-the-road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing some practical tips along the way. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting March 18th, 2013. I'm traveling yet again this week, attending a security conference here in Helsinki, Finland, so I need to make this episode quick. Why don't we jump right in? So let's start this week with two stories stories that, though different, share the general theme of cyber legislation. Early in the week, we heard the results of the trial against a well-known attacker known as Weave, uh, whose real name is Andrew Arnheimer. Andrew Arnheimer and a, another uh, gray hat hacker were the researchers that actually found some vulnerabilities in AT&T's website. And they could leverage those vulnerabilities to download some of the sensitive in and private information of 100,000 uh, iPad owners. In any case, this week, a judge actually sentenced Weave to 41 months or 3.5 years in jail for this particular attack. And this particular judgment is causing a, a quite a stir among the security industry. On one hand, what Weave and his, this other hacker did might be considered unauthorized computer access. You know, one of the rules of penetration testing is you shouldn't do any sort of penetration testing without the explicit permission of the person or the organization you're going after. And Weave did not ask AT&T's permission to try to leverage this particular vulnerability, nor did they actually share any of the information about the vulnerability with AT&T. So that really isn't a, a very good moral thing to do. On the other hand, uh, Weave is definitely not a criminal attacker. He's not, his goal wasn't to leverage this flaw to steal data. He wanted to publicize the flaw and kind of humiliate AT&T into fixing it. So many researchers think this sentence of 41 months in prison is way too harsh. Though we really do need cyber legislation that allows us to prosecute the real criminals, you know, cyber criminals stealing money from us, or attackers going after criminal infrastructure, many people don't think that researchers who are really trying to out these flaws should be as punished as harshly as, as these other criminals. In any case, we'll see what happens. Weave is going to appeal this judgment, and the industry has kind of spoken out against it. The second story having to do with cyber legislation is a researcher who used a botnet to kind of survey the internet. Essentially, this researcher created a program that scanned various addresses on the internet looking for weaknesses such as default passwords or badly configured devices. If he found such devices, he would actually infect them with a special program. He ended up infecting over 420,000 different devices with his specialized program. So he essentially hacked them in order to do his research. Now this program wasn't really malicious in nature. Instead, he used his victims to scan more of the IPv4 address space. And he's essentially trying to take a survey of the IPv4 internet to see how many vulnerable computers were out there, how many uh, were exposed on the internet and so on. While this uh, research botnet is kind of interesting from a technical point of view, the real story is the fact that this researcher is technically breaking the law to do his research. Infecting these 420,000 hosts without their uh, implicit permission is definitely against the law in many countries, which by the way is why this re uh, researcher is still remaining anonymous. To forcefully take control of all these resources on the internet is wrong, and it should be against the law. So we'll see what happens with this case in the future. Another story from this week shows just how targeted industrial control or ICS systems and supervisory control in data acquisitions or SCADA systems are on the internet. This story comes from a Trend Micro researcher. This particular researcher set up three different honeypots, basically a honeypot that pretended or mimicked a water pressure uh, treatment facility, a honeypot that mimicked a programmable logic controller, and another honeypot that posed as a human control interface device. He put up these three SCADA in ICS honeypots, and within 28 days, he saw well over 30 attacks against them coming from over 14 
15 different countries, primarily China, US, and Laos. And these weren't just normal attacks. In fact, he actually ignored port scans or any sort of automated attacks like automated SQL injection attacks. He was only keeping track of very targeted attacks to these SCADA and ICS control facilities. And it's a very, very interesting report. I'll make sure to put a link to the research on our WatchGuard Security Center blog post associated with this video. And really what this is showing is attackers really are targeting critical infrastructure right now. So if you're one of the organizations that use these sort of SCADA and ICS control systems and you put any of these systems online, it's very, very important you start to leverage the same defensive controls that we've been using in, in normal business for quite a while. Next up is a major attack against a well-known security journalist. Uh, this actually happened late Friday before I could post it in last week's video. You probably know of a security journalist called Brian Krebs. He really is a well-known security journalist and writes some fantastic pieces on cybercrime and, and information and network security topics. Anyways, late last week, sometime on Friday, Krebs came under many different cyber and physical attacks. It started uh, with some people sending spoofed emails that pretended to come from the FBI to his website's ISP saying that his, IS, his, his website was responsible for criminal activity. After that email was sent, the attackers also started sending some very heavy distributed denial of service attacks against his website. However, what takes the cake is during the DDoS attack, the attacker also did something called swatting Brian Krebs. Swatting is where the attacker knows the physical address and the phone number for the victim, and they then spoof that a victim's phone number and call 911 and complain about some big crime such as, you know, a Russian mobster attacking your family or something like that. And the point is to get the police or even the SWAT team to arrive at the victim's location and then harass them. So basically while these cyber attacks were happening against uh, Brian Krebs's website, he also got a knock on the door where the police were actually responding to a 911 incident call. Brian wrote about this on his Krebs on security blog. I recommend you check it out in the link we provide. It's a very, very interesting story and it shows how attackers can use both cyber attacks and more social engineering attacks such as doxing and swatting against victims at the same time. So let me end just by sharing two game related uh, security incidents. I'm a gamer myself so it always interests me when attackers go after game services. The first is an, uh, more attacks against Xbox Live. This week some very well well-known Microsoft Xbox Live accounts were hijacked. So these are accounts from actual Microsoft employees, well-known employees. No one really knows how these accounts were hijacked. A lot of people suspect it was probably some social engineering or, or password reset situation. But anyways, it shows that attackers are still trying to go after many online uh, gaming accounts such as Xbox Live accounts. The other game-related security story is a vulnerability in EA's origin service. Uh, like Steam, EA's origin service is a service where you can actually buy games online. Uh, a researcher named Luigi, who works for the company Revoln, uh, published a paper about a vulnerability in the way the origin URI works. It's very similar to a Steam vulnerability I talked about months and months ago. Essentially, if an attacker can uh, get someone that's installed Origin uh, to click on a specially crafted URL, he can leverage a flaw in this game uh, uh, software service to force that user to install malware remotely on his computer. So be aware of this vulnerability. EA hasn't fixed it yet, but they're obviously aware of it. Uh, one simple workaround is on your computer, you have the ability to associate different URIs like origin uh, colon slash slash or file slash slash with different programs. And if you actually globally remove the origin URI, you can protect yourself from this vulnerability. So that's it for this short On the Road Edition episode. As always, if you want more regular security stories, be sure to follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog or follow me on Twitter. I go by at SecAdept or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.